only mode. Great morning sales teams and welcome to Yossum. My name is Emma Monroe. I am the creator of your online sales manager and I'm really excited today to introduce you to Nigel Hain from Divest IT. We'll go a little bit more into um, who Nigel is in a moment but firstly we have Anoop Anchal who is our sales manager for Australia who will be inter um, interviewing Nigel today. I'll hand it over to you Anoop. Thanks Emma. Good morning everyone. I hope you're having a great week selling a lot and uh, putting a lot of the processes that we've been speaking about into uh, action. Uh, we have actually a, a fantastic speaker today. It's a, it's a guy I really do admire in the sphere of um, business and sales and um, somebody I've got to know quite well over the last uh, couple of years. Um, and, and Nigel is absolutely brilliant in what he does with his business and where he's taken it and uh, he's also one of these guys that lives and breathes and talks uh, business and sales, but also has had, you know, um, certain uh, disruptions in his uh, business that didn't go the way he planned, and uh, and the way he moved forward was um, was uh, quite extraordinary. And um, so today, I really want you guys to actually take a lot of notes. Um, we've always had great speakers on, and today's a great treat for us. Have I think he's just come back from IBT, so. Maybe a little bit jet lag, but uh, welcome online, Nigel. It's great to have you on board today. Thanks very much, Nick. Uh, very honoured to be interviewed by you. Not a problem. Nigel, do you want to give us a little bit of a background on um, who you are and what Divest IT does and uh, sort of where you come from? Yeah, sure, Nick. Look, um, in a nutshell, um, I started off um, being a, a, a true IT nerd, playing with um, computers at a very young age. and. Um, really got into the hardware side of things, it's not the programming or the games or anything as others do and um, look essentially just um, fell in love with um, technology, um, especially when, when you start mastering at a young age, look I, I built my first computer when I was eight under the guidance of my father and um, to be honest that sort of feeds the ego when your friends come around and you're an eight year old putting together the computer and um, you know, switching it on and showing them you know, Pac-Man and all that sort of thing. So, look, um, <laughs> Yeah, look, uh, that's really where it all started from. Um, set up my first business when I was 15, um, you know, selling computers. And um, when I was in grade 12 at high school, I think I um, had, had income of close to 150K um, very, very quickly just by, you know, building computers, selling computers. And, yeah, to cut a long story short, just really had that as um, what I wanted to do. I, I knew what I wanted to do. I wanted to make a, a lot of money, but I wanted to make it, um, you know, for the right reasons. And um, Mm. Look, personally touched by a number of um, different causes along the way. Um, yeah, family have been touched by cancer, and um, really that's what's driving me. So you know, make a lot of money, um, give back to the community, but you know, create that positive cycle of you know making more and giving back. So that's really me in a nutshell. And um, to explain Divest IT, look, um, the best way to put Divest IT is to, to say um, we offer um, four million dollars worth of technology at a very affordable price point. So. To SMEs to go and buy four million dollars worth of technology um, that, that's unachievable. Um, mm -hmm. What we, we do is we change it from a capital expenditure to an operational expenditure, and you can access four million dollars worth of technology for you know a couple of grand a month, effectively. Yeah, yeah, that's great. And um, uh, thank you for your honesty around um, you know, talking about where you come from. But you know, some something that um, I think our listeners uh, um, would really get a kick out of is actually just having. Uh, the drive and passion at such a young age. Um, and I guess what I want to talk about is obviously you're successful at a young age. What were the traps that you fell into? Um, you know, you were successful quickly. What are some of the things that I guess that has time has taught you now that you look back and go, you know, if I would have known that now, and I would have implemented it then, I would, uh, you know, there would have been a couple of different results. Yeah, look, um, very good question, Anoop, and I think the, the first and foremost thing that comes to my mind is um, as a business owner and even a, a young person, you just got to appreciate that you don't know everything. You really need to reach out and um, find a mentor, find a coach. Um, look, I, I made the mistake of just listening to lots of people, listening to family, um, saying yes to everyone. and. Um, yeah, look, to be honest, when I was 22, I think I lost about $300,000 in the course of a couple of years. So, um, yeah, hurt, learnt the hard way. Um, but, yeah. yeah, look, the best thing I ever did was 2005 engaged a business coach. Um, and really, if you look at the financial results of um, my first company, um, it basically went up from 2006 onwards. Um, yeah, um, yeah. Ex exponential growth. 
um, and then look at, as of last year, um, sold that business into another group, and um, it, which is really Divest IT now, what we're doing. And um, the yeah. chairman of that group, um, you know, very, very um, strategic, um, you know, one of the smartest guys I know. And um, yeah, look, I guess that, that's probably the biggest thing that I'd say is that everyone in life needs someone to turn to. When you're a child, you turn to your parents. Um, when you're mm -hmm. building the business, you really need to have that person. Um, and you, know, you look at the likes of Apple and all of those guys, you know, Steve Jobs, um, he had his business coach Bill he used to go running with him and jogging with him, talking to him, you know, yeah. even the best guys have to have people that you can just, you know, use as a sounding board. So. Yeah. Um, something really interesting you said and, um, you know, you know, the question I've got is you lost money at the age of 22, but rather than be deterred, you actually said, well, hold on, there might be another way and what I need to do is seek help, as in, you know, people who can coach me, guide me and mentor me. Um, and I don't like to use ever the word failure, um, so in this context I'm not going to use it. But how do you come back from, you know, a certain lesson, let's say, that is that could be quite damaging? Um, you know, how do you psychologically come back from that and say, well, I lost a lot of money, I wasn't here at one stage, and, you know, I need to pick myself up and rerun, uh, rather than just stay stagnant in the position that I'm in. Um, what do you have to say to yourself at that time? Yeah, look, um, again, a, a, a big question and you can reflect and um, look back then, to be honest, I, I guess, you know, as a, being naive and being young, I, I really looked at it as um, nothing to lose and everything to gain. And I guess the, the way that I looked at it was quite strongly influenced by the people around me. Like, I've got to thank my, my family and my friends. And um, I think it really comes down to just, you know, who you surround yourself with. If you surround yourself with positive people that are always looking for utopia and, um, look, you know, everything in life is not perfect. Um, you, you've got to yeah. deal with the challenges, but it's a challenge. You know, the difference between the challenges, it can be overcome more than the problem. The problem, you've got to sit down and try and resolve it. So I think having that mental attitude, um, it, it really just mm. starts from an early age, you know, like when you, when you build your business and... Um, yeah, you just sit with a lot of setbacks, but you also, you know, have a lot of positives, and the positives always outweigh the negatives. And um, I guess you know, the reason we have negatives in life are to appreciate those good times, right? So. Yeah, yeah, no, exactly. And and listen, something that's you know, this is the second week in a row we've had a great speaker talk about surrounding yourself with positive energy and people that can actually help you move forward. And that doesn't mean that you use people. It actually means that what you do is you feed off other people's energy and that a positive energy to move you in the right direction rather than keeping yourself in negative energy. And it's quite true and it's proven also with a lot of psychologists and psychiatrists that people who are actually clinically depressed can actually get out of the depression quite quickly if they change their environment of the people that they're around. And, um, and, that, and that's really awesome to hear. And you, you, you also back that up, Marjorie, which is great. So. Now, so, you, so you've gone off and you know, built this company. Now, obviously, sales has, has had to play um, a pretty strategic role in this. So um, tell me about the sales process that you've had to engineer or uh, to work with along the period of time that you've had now, you know, moving from you know, sort of the sole operator to building the company, selling it off and acquiring the best IT. Um, 